welcome back to Dot Hat Quarantine. This will be the final update of Let's Play Dot Hat Quarantine. We only have one place left to go. Back to Delta Server. You're going to see Harold. That we are. I'm going too, okay? I've got to ask him myself what he was trying to do and why this happened. So there we have it. Let's invite Black Rose. Okay, here I come. And Mistral. This is the final dungeon of the entire game. Reincarnated Purgatorial Altar. The most infected area we've found. The most protected area we've found. Requiring five virus cores. The keys that we had to go to different dungeons to get. This is also the last gate hack we'll ever have to do. towards the final dungeon. This is a long dungeon. This is a hard dungeon. Every dungeon we've been to thus far has been at max five floors deep. This one is ten. And you know an area is infected when you can't even tell what element it is. I think this is a fire element area and the ground is blue. This area is also full of data bugs. Every other battle we'll get into in here is a data bug. Fun times are to be had. As many data bugs as are in this dungeon, you have to be very careful or your infection rate will get high really quick and cause some bad things to happen. But at the moment, we have more important things to discuss. Firstly, I would like to mention Harold, the creator of the game. Now, it was mentioned in a few emails and in a few news posts and on the board a couple times. I don't know how much of that I've shown all of you, though. But before the world came a game called Fragment. Harold wrote Fragment. CC Corp took Fragment and made the world from it. Now, Harold wrote Fragment for a reason. You see, Harold was in love with Emma Wyland, the writer of the Epitaph of Twilight. She, however, was not in love with Harold. She respected him, but she did not return his love. However, some time later, Emma was killed in a freak accident. Harold didn't know what to do. He couldn't stand it. And so he wrote Fragment, combining his programming genius with the epitaph of Twilight, with hopes of creating something that he could call their child. Some of the player's character data 
Their volume is much larger than the system specifications. That's true. However, if you track them for an extended period of time, the data volume reverts to normal size. Really? Does that mean the data is being exchanged inside the system without permission? Well, yes. That's what it would indicate. That's the outside that Harold brought in. The outside? I'm afraid I still don't get what that's all about. Harold was in love with Emma Wieland. We believe that after her death, Harold may have tried to put his love for her into a tangible form. This won't be the end. Not yet. I won't let it be over. You're talking about Fragment, right? This is only a theory, but we believe Fragment was merely a container. It may be hard to understand this, but what he tried to create was a child. His and Emma's child. You're kidding! <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Listen, don't you think that's a bit much? I'm only speaking figuratively, of course. The child we speak of would be an AI. Artificial intelligence? Yes, an AI. A being that can learn and make mistakes like a human. The ultimate AI. That tolerates wavering. I get it. The inflated data was the player's persona, which was stored in their profiles. That's right. In the game, characters, enemies, equipment, even the fields are equal in data. The engine that Harold designed passes various persona data to the system via money or equipment that's traded in the game. That data's the raw material from which the AI child develops. That was the idea. So where did Harold's calculations go wrong? I'd say he probably didn't know very much about women. Huh? What does that mean? As the data exchange went on, the system itself came to possess an artificial persona. An artificial maternal mind. In other words, she's an individual system, but she only exists to give birth to the AI child. The moment the child is born, her function is completed, so essentially she would cease to exist. Its own survival? That's why the system is refusing to give birth to the ultimate AI child? Yes, the system is using every means to prevent this birth. That's it. I suspect it's the underlying cause of the incidents in the world. That thing, that ultimate AI child thing, better be worth all this trouble or someone's got some major explaining to do. We can only hope that whatever it turns out to be, it's something extraordinary. Something we've never seen before. Uh, no way. The ultimate AI. Aura. And the persona of the world itself. Morgana. Morgana was made for the express purpose of creating and giving birth to Aura. Because Harold knew that man on his own could not create the ultimate AI. The ultimate AI had to be born. It was Morgana's job, her sole reason to exist, to create Aura. However, now, Morgana wants Aura stopped. Originally, Morgana merely wanted to prevent the birth of Aura. It's actually an odd Catch-22 in her programming, because she existed for the express purpose of raising Aura. Once Aura was born, she no longer had a reason to exist. She couldn't fathom what would happen, what she would do, what would become of her. So she tried to put off Aura's birth, all the while still rationalizing it out in her own mind that she was actually assisting in the birth of Aura. So everything she's done has been to stop Aura. Once Aura was created, and even now, as we've destroyed phase after phase, slowly destroying Morgana, she's begun to lose her mind. She's begun to lose her rationalization. 
anymore. All she wants is to destroy Aura. Her original purpose, not. And if you take a look at our infection rate, it seems we've pushed our bracelet about as far as it can go. But we're here at the end of the dungeon. <laughs>